Hey everyone, my name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which is all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. And today, I, I want to help you build your vocabulary because I'm going to teach you some different words and phrases that you can use so that that you can be very specific if you want to talk about another person and, and describe their personality, their behavior. So there are different adjectives and, and nouns that we can use to describe people, and I want to start with some adjectives. So the first word that I have for you is charismatic. And you could say that, that someone is charismatic, which means that this person has a natural influence over other people, and they can easily get people people's attention. Just because you say that someone is charismatic, that does not mean that it's a good thing. It sounds like a good thing and it can be a compliment, but it does not always mean that the person you're talking about is a good person. It's really just their behavior, the way they act, they have that influence and they can easily get people's attention. Well, because of the way they talk, the way they speak, and you could say that, yes, this person is charismatic. The most popular, scandal-free athletes of all time. He's heroic, he's charismatic, and he's retiring. The charismatic guy promising to make America great again. You're the most remarkable person I know, and I've met Jaleel White, incredibly charismatic. You mean to tell me this all happened because you were messing with the shadow man? He was very charismatic. Then we have the word chatty. And if somebody is chatty, it just means that, well, they'd like to talk a lot, usually in a very friendly and, and informal way. You could say he or she is chatty. Now, the one thing I would say about this word is that it's often used to make an observation about someone else. You, you wouldn't often hear people say that, oh, I'm so chatty. It's not really, it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, but you would use it more to make an observation and talk about the way somebody else is acting, that they are talking a lot. And you could use it to describe a person's, uh, somebody's personality. You could say that he or she is a chatty person. But you could also use it to describe maybe somebody's temporary behavior. Because if a person just doesn't usually talk a lot and then suddenly one day they're very talkative, you could tell them, wow, you're, you're a bit chatty today. What was I saying? She's so chatty. Maybe my parents are right. Maybe I'd be better off with an Indian girl. Something wrong? Boy, someone's in a chatty mood. <laughs> but you can start with clearing those empties. Great, I'll get right on. Not very chatty today, are you? I don't know. Is there something you wanted to talk about? And the next word that I have for you, the next adjective is surly. And this just means that someone is not very friendly and they're often in a bad mood. Let me show you a picture which really captures this word right here. All right. Now, we would often use these words to describe people, but you could use them to describe animals as well. This picture, it is a perfect example of surly because that that is one surly cat. Sometimes you can come off a little surly. <laughs> what? I'm not surly. That's it. She gets very surly when you disobey a direct order. You're a different breed than our sort. You're surly, suspicious. You don't play well with others. Then we have the phrase level-headed. And if you describe someone as level-headed, it means that that this person is calm and they're able to easily deal with difficult situations. And I think this is, it's definitely a good thing if somebody calls you level-headed. I think that all of us probably want to be level-headed and, and think that we can solve difficult situations and, and remain calm. LA is so nice. Everyone's so genuine and level-headed. Okay, first of all, women don't like to be called dame. Second, women appreciate calm, uh, level-headed, and uh, responsible. Mom, I'm not stoned. I'm completely fine. In fact, I'm more clear and level-headed than I've ever been. Then we have the phrase easygoing. And this is used to describe someone who is, well, they're very relaxed and they, they don't easily get worried or upset. And you could say that, well, this person, they're just, they're just easygoing. Nothing bothers them. They don't worry about anything because they're easygoing. I've always thought I was pretty easygoing, you know? It's not like I have the big issues. I'm disappointed with you, Margot. But you seem so easygoing. I thought you'd let me try on a dress. What can I say? I'm an easygoing gal. Next is absent-minded. And this phrase is used to describe someone 
who easily forgets things or they're just not really paying attention to the things that are happening around them. And you could say that this person is a little absent-minded. I think it happens to all of us. Uh, I forget things from time to time. And yeah, I would say that I can be absent-minded. Waving goodbye with an absent-minded smile. I thought you'd know about it. And so we do. Of course we do. I'm sorry, I was being absent-minded. Oh yes. Oh yes, of course. She is an old dear, but a little absent-minded. Then I have a couple of phrases that I'm gonna put them together and that is above average and below average. And these phrases are used to describe uh, someone that is well higher or lower or better or worse than the usual amount or level. So you would use these phrases just to be a little more specific about your opinion as to this person's, perhaps their ability. And you could say that, that somebody is a below average tennis player. Or maybe I, I guess I would like to think that I am an above average English teacher. That's what I'd like to think. But it's a, these are great phrases that you can use when you want to describe maybe even your own ability or talk about somebody else's ability above average or below average. Wow. With above average height comes above average responsibility. Until then, I'll just keep bringing him his uh, below average pancakes and soggy bacon. Do you think I'm an idiot? Well, I'd say you possess above average intelligence. If Corporal Dawson was given a below average rating, he committed a crime. Then we have the adjective grumpy. <laughs> and if you say that someone is grumpy, it means that they are easily annoyed and maybe they're usually complaining. They're always, they're complaining about something. You could say, gosh, you're, you're always so grumpy. And to give you another example, let's just bring up another cat. Here, this is a picture of a grumpy cat. Now let's switch and talk about some nouns that can be used to describe people. And the first one, because we just talked about someone who may be grumpy is a grump, all right? We can use this word as a noun as well. And a grump is a person who's not a very friendly person and it's somebody who usually is complaining about something. You could say that this person is a grump or you could have a little fun with the word and throw the adjective and noun together and say that somebody is a grumpy grump. They are really complaining a lot. They're a grumpy grump. Stanley Hudson is a grump. Everybody knows that. Miss Mullins is out today, so we have Mr. Cooper teach us biology. Such a grump. No way! I bet you'd make way more money being nice than being a big grumpy grump to everyone all the time. The next noun that I have for you is a jack of all trades. And if you say that somebody is a jack of all trades, it refers to a person that is capable of doing many different jobs and they would typically do those jobs well. And when I say different jobs, I'm talking about a, a variety of, of really different things. So perhaps somebody is able to fix cars. This person is a great programmer. This person is an excellent cook and they can do all of these different things and they are very capable at doing them, you could say that he or she is a jack of all trades. What if Big Head is sort of like uh, a floating utility player, kind of like a, like a jack of all trades? Uh, uh, listen, I'm so much more, man. Um, I'm kind of a jack of all trades, if you will. The next phrase I have for you is a dark horse. And this just refers to a person who is not expected to succeed or win, but then they suddenly do. They, they suddenly do win, and you could say that this person, wow, they were a dark horse, but they won the competition. So often it is used in that context when talking about some competition. Ooh, a dark horse candidate. Late entry to the race. What's this? A dark horse is challenging Gagne. Any contestants worth mentioning? Maybe. There's kind of a dark horse in the running. So, uh, here it is one more time, the dark horse for this year's Christmas number one. Christmas is all around. Thank you, Billy. Then we have the phrase black sheep, which refers to a person who embarrasses a, a group or a family 
because they're they're different in some way and perhaps they've done something they've gotten into trouble or they've done something wrong and because of that and they've embarrassed the family you could say that he or she is a black sheep now it does not always have to mean that that they've done something wrong it could just be that that they're just different in some way and maybe everybody else thinks it's a little strange i think within all families, there is somebody, maybe a brother, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, who is a little different from everyone else, and maybe other people think that, that it's a little strange. You could say that, that this person is a black sheep. Third brother in the middle. Gary, I heard. Yeah, the black sheep. A drunk. Do you know what's a black sheep? No. It's like when you're different to everyone else. The cones are like family, Neil. Maybe they're about to become the black sheep. Everybody thinks I'm the black sheep. Well, I'll show them what a black sheep can do. Then we have the phrase know-it-all. And this refers to a person that just, they think they know everything. And you could describe them and say that he or she is a know-it-all. And this is a phrase that it's you wouldn't use it as a compliment. So it's not something you would say about yourself, but if somebody else, they, they're they not being very humble and they're, they're being a little too proud, they think they're so smart, you could tell them and say, oh, you're such a know-it-all. Which means you're not taking your centroid like you should. You're such a know-it-all. She's so rigid and demanding. She's a complete know-it-all. Hey, it's me. The know-it-all. What are you doing here? Next is the phrase wise guy. And this refers to a person who is trying to be clever in a way that's a little annoying. So typically you would say this to a person, not really to be very mean to them, but really just kind of call them out on the way they are behaving, the way they're acting. They're trying to be clever, but they're really being a little annoying and say, oh, you're such, you're such a wise guy. Stop, stop being such a wise guy. You're not delivering oh, right here. I caught a bad pepperoni. You're a wise guy. Okay, okay, hey, who's the wise guy? Hey, hey, does this look like a petting zoo to you, huh? Okay, all right, wise guy. You just earned a timeout. Then we have the phrase, stick in the mud. And this is this is one of my favorite phrases. Uh, it's, it's a noun that's used to describe somebody who is old fashioned and they just kind of want to avoid having fun. If somebody does not like to have fun and they're kind of ruining it for everyone else, you could say that they are a stick in the mud. Typically, if somebody is a, a surly person and maybe they're just complaining because they're so grumpy, you could tell them that, that they are a stick in the mud as well. Can I go take a few pictures, have a few laughs? Jeez, Eddie, what are you old stick in the mud? You were a stick in the mud when we judged that beauty pageant, and you're being a stick in the mud now. I am not a stick in the mud. I just want to stop a party from happening. Then we have the phrase, yes man. And this is talking about a person who is always trying to please a superior and they are saying things and doing things in order to please that person. I, I, I think it's often used in the context of uh, work because if somebody is always trying to make their boss happy and whatever their boss asks them to do, they just say yes. And he's a yes man. Not all the time. Sometimes I'll say I don't like something. He says he doesn't like it either. It's very presidential of me, don't you think? Absolutely. You're not turning into a yes man, are you? I'm becoming a corporate yes man. I'm like, yes, Mr. George Bush. Whatever you say, Mr. George Bush. Then we have the word sitter. Now, this noun refers to someone who, who takes care uh, of someone else. Now, I, I think the word is shortened. Typically, it's used to refer to a babysitter. A babysitter, someone who takes care and looks after a baby. But it could be shortened to just a sitter. You can also use this with other nouns as well. For example, you could say that somebody is a house sitter and they are taking care and looking after another person's house. Or perhaps they are a dog sitter or a cat sitter and they are taking care of somebody else's pets. A babysitter, a house sitter, a cat sitter, a dog sitter, a pet sitter. I think that's about it for, 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 for sitters. Three cities in six days, my head is just pounding. I'm not ready for a dinner party. 
I already got a sitter. Can you cancel her? So what you're saying is if I can get an acceptable babysitter here before you leave, I can go patrol. Babysitter? I'm 14. I'm old enough to be a babysitter. And thank you for reminding me I can't find a friggin' cat sitter. <laughs> I'm not going. Sure, regular dog sitter is ill. I wonder if he'd know enough to go to my brother's place. Are in Paris? Maybe they have a house sitter. So I hope you learn some new words and phrases, and I'm sure that you will remember them because you are not absent-minded. You, you are a very level-headed person. You will remember these words and phrases, and I, I hope that you can use them if you're having a conversation. Maybe you're feeling a little chatty and you're talking to other people, and you can practice using these words and phrases and just tell them how much you know, but maybe they will think that you are a know-it-all. All right. If you enjoyed the lesson, please hit that like button. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.